Okay, so my sister actually used my, my middle name because she was afraid that you wouldn't let me speak. I'm Cara Wilson. I'm the mother of Alexis Wilson killed by Dalton, Illinois police. On the time, at the time that my daughter was killed, Tiffany stood in front of a microphone much like this and said that she stood with the cops and they did do the right thing by killing my 19 year old child. Not only did she not take those words back, she didn't offer a condolences. She's never said anything. The first thing she did was hire this group of security guards to surround her and PR. So the real reason Tiffany has security is hiding from accountability about what she said about Alexis Wilson when she was killed. Now, if you watch the coverage of this murder, these officers violated her rights, reached in her car, jumped in her car, and put seven bullets in my child, two in her head and five down her side. And the next day, you guys tried to spin it like she did something. Watch the video. She did nothing to deserve this. And again, last time they brought up Alexis, she's doing what she does now. Look this way, look that way, every way, but at the person talking. You don't give a damn, and you never did, and you never acted like it. She called out a whole press conference to call my daughter a criminal, a, a Homewood Flossmore graduate with no criminal record. But Tiffany, you have one, because we used your mugshot to, to protest in front of your house, and that's why you hid. That's why you have security. So let's tell the truth, which I know you're incapable of. I wouldn't trust this woman if she stood on a stack of Bibles and had her tongue notarized. Not a damn thing she says comes out her mouth is true. Start with a quick Thank you. Alexis, uh, Dalton uh, Politics Board Meeting, January 2019. The fight for body cams. Control lies, but she's coming. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Madam Clerk, Trustees, and fine citizens of Dalton. In our continuing effort to try to push this police department into the 21st century, um, part of that is in trying to improve our technology. Um, and also transparency. We were talking about transparency earlier. And um, oftentimes when there's an encounter with a police officer, there's a question that remains of what actually happened. The uh, version from the citizen or the violator and also the police officer's version. So what we have been doing over the past year is exploring the introduction of body worn cameras or generic terms, body cams. And um, in today's times, everyone is aware that there are body cameras that exist. Um, in Illinois, I'm not sure how many departments we have that wear body cameras, but there is a wave coming across that it probably at some point in our lifetime, it'll be mandated that police officers wear body cams. Uh, we would like to introduce body cameras to our police officers so that we can maintain that level of transparency. Also, that so that we can reduce our exposure to liability. Um, do the false claims or fictitious claims, and also to keep our police officers honest on their encounters with the citizens out there. Um, we have piloted a camera program over the last year with a company called Intrinsic, and some of that video evidence that has been collected has been very valuable to us when it comes to prosecutions and also when it comes to citizen complaints against police officers. Uh, we use that data. Uh, gave each of you a small packet that has Patrol Lies. This is the actual company that we are looking at that has been introduced to us through the company called Intrinsic. Intrinsic, Intrinsic is a software company. They do not make the hardware, but they recommend the, the hardware. On the very last page is a quote from them on what the actual cost is. So what is very unique to the police department is our ability to buy equipment, purchase equipment, uh, programs, and software without the burden on the taxpayers through the use of asset forfeiture. So what we would like to do is use asset forfeiture to introduce these body cams. There's a substantial cost to it. However, the cost of ownership of these cameras is built out over a five year period. So it's more manageable. And we do have the ability to manage this cost through our asset forfeiture program. Um, and a lot of th some of the programs that I've introduced, I always talk about the asset forfeiture and for the citizens who are not aware of what asset forfeiture program is, is the uh, federal government has allowed law enforcement agencies to seize property of uh, criminals, uh, say, for instance, a drug dealer. We stop a drug dealer who has drugs and money. That money obviously was Ill illegally gotten 
illegally gotten gains. So we have the ability to take that property to court and ask the court to award it to the police department. Uh, some cases we win, some cases we do not win. But just to give you an example of what it's like is a couple years ago, we were involved in a multi-agency um, criminal investigation and in excess of $1 million was seized. And Dalton's portion of that was $95,000, which we received our check a couple months ago for $95,000, which goes into the asset, uh, asset forfeiture account which is strictly and mandated to be used only for law enforcement. It has to be turned back into law enforcement. You can't repair the village hall. You can't buy pens, pencils outside of the police department. You have to use that for law enforcement investigations. And that is the intent of what we'd like to do so that we don't have to keep asking the taxpayers for more money, more money. Um, we, we obviously have financial issues that we like to uh, that we have to address, but we also like to be financially responsible as we try to move this police department forward. So I'm asking tonight if you would take a look at the quote and if it's reasonable, I would ask for your vote so that we can pursue this opportunity. Question for you, Chief. Yes, sir. I, I don't know if I asked this at the committee meeting, but it just came to my mind for those who may be thinking about this. Uh, a scenario is uh, the a police uh, stops an individual in his vehicle. When does the camera activate upon interaction with that individual and can you tell when that officer has turned that camera off during the middle of that um interaction with that individual yes um as far as illinois is concerned uh, concerned there are specific illinois statutes that we have to follow if we decide to enact a body-worn camera program one of the uh, one of the requirements is once the officer receives the initial call for service, the officer has to activate the uh, on button to start recording even before the officer arrives on scene. One of the other requirements is that each body worn camera has to have a pre event buffer. In other words, it has to have a 30 second before recording before even pressing that button so that you can go back basically go back in time and find out what happened 30 seconds before the officer actually activated that. One of the other requirements is that once an officer has an encounter with the person, if it is a witness the or or the parents of a juvenile or a juvenile, if, it, if they are requested to turn the camera off, they have to turn the camera off. Now, all digital evidence is uploaded. And what, what one of the good things about Intrinsic is we don't have to maintain a server to put video data on. Video takes up an incredible amount of space, and if you can imagine how much we'd be generating, we are open 24 hours a day, three shifts per day, that's a lot of video data. So what would happen, it would be on a cloud server. We own the data, but our data would reside on a cloud. Officers do not have the ability to manipulate the data. They do not have the ability to erase the data or alter the data in any way. Um, in fact, anything that you do inside that program, there's an audit trail. Even if you just looked at a video, it'll say who signed in, who logged in, and just even looked at the video. Thank you. And this was talked about at the police and fire committee meeting, just so everyone's aware that this is not the first time that uh, the committee members are hearing that. We had that uh, uh, at our last police and fire committee meeting, which was held last month. So I'd like to make, with that being said, I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, let the chief move forward with the body cam uh, patrol eyes. Second. The motion is second to uh, move forward with the body cams. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call. Trustee Muhammad. Aye. Trustee Stubbs. Aye. Trustee Pearson. Aye. Trustee Henry. Aye. Motion carried for aye. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Officer Collins, move forward to get body cams for Dalton Police Station, which proved to be beneficial for our situation we are representing. America, good evening, and Chicago Road is back open tonight. Police did have it shut down for some time as Village Hall is just on the other side, about a block from where we're standing right now. There was a protest tonight for the shooting death of Alexis Wilson. Protesters tonight still have a lot of questions over that incident. 
cell phone video provided to CBS2 shows some of those arrests. Dalton police says the crowd crossed barriers and police lines that were set up and that's when the arrests occurred. Protesters we spoke with say they were peacefully demonstrating on the sidewalk. It all happened near 142nd in Chicago, just a block or so from Village Hall. Several police departments were called in, including state police. We spoke with Camilla Williams, who says she was one of the people detained and released tonight. He told me um, I was arrested for disturbance. So I got some disturbing charges and, you know, I feel like my rights to protest was infringed on. Step out of the car. Step out of the car. Police were called to a fast food restaurant in July where workers said Alexis Wilson in the red van wouldn't leave and was threatening workers with a weapon in the drive through. The passenger in the car got out, but Wilson did not. Surveillance video shows that she drove off and dragged one of the officers. Hello everyone, Asagai from Drinking Gourd. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to revisit Tiffany Henyard, the self-proclaimed super mayor of Dalton, Illinois. Tiffany has come under a lot of fire lately for her spending and potential cover-ups of sexual allegations. But when digging, you find a whole lot more. Today we're going to talk about a potential police execution cover-up. This story is all about a 19-year-old girl shot at point-blank range by Dalton police officer Jared Carlton. This incident occurred in July of 2021, just a few months after Tiffany Henyard took office. About a week after the incident, the Dalton police released the edited body cam footage to the public. This footage shows exactly what they want you to see and not the whole story. To this date, the entire body cam footage of all officers involved have not been released by Tiffany. First, we're going to look at what was released to the public and aired on the news. Then, we'll break down what we've seen and what is not there. The family of a woman shot and killed by Dalton police speaks out as video of that deadly encounter is made public. The 19-year-old was killed just over a week ago. Tia Ewing is live in Studio 32 with more. Tia? Well, the family of Alexis Wilson, they question why all of the video was not released by police, and they claim she was shot seven times at close range. There's a person outside with a gun, and they're knocking on the caller's window. Workers inside Baba's famous steak and lemonade in Dalton on Sibley Boulevard called for police on July 27th. At one point, the male passenger gets out. In this angle of the video released by Dalton police, you see 19-year-old Alexis Wilson hitting the drive through window with an object that police say was not a gun. Yeah, they're here. Okay, okay. I see you guys. Hold up. Go, go get that. The male passenger complies with Dalton police. Wilson pleads with the officers. I'll tell you a minute. What's going on? I'll tell you a minute. I'll make you. But then cover yourself up with that, with that rover. Body camera video from the passenger side shows what happens next. <laughs> Wilson's family insists the 19 year old was punched in the face by the officer. It can be assumed that it's a punch, but I can't assume that it is, and I can't assume that it isn't. Wilson's family questions why only portions of the video was released. We don't have the power to pull body cam. We don't have the power to edit things. This is not a movie. You don't have the right to edit things to make it the narrative you want it to be. The officer on the passenger side held onto the van as it crashed into this bike store. He's still in the hospital. Our condolences go out to the family, obviously. And like I said to you earlier, that's absolutely something that no one wants. We didn't want it, and, I'm, and I know they, they didn't want this either. A loaded handgun with an extended clip was recovered. Police don't know who that belongs to. Illinois State Police are continuing their investigation. Live tonight, Tia Ewing, Fox 32 Chicago. Natalie. As we break down this footage, we're going to include an interview with Alexis Wilson's mother, Kara Wilson. Kara gives an account of what happened, apparently by body cam footage that she was privileged to see that the public was not. Let's take a look. We'll start off with what's known as an establishing shot. We'll call this view camera one. Next, we go into another establishing shot, which will be camera two. 
Then we have two officers wearing body cams, which we'll call cameras three and four. Next, we have two more officers that arrive, which will be cameras five and six. Shout out to O'Shea Duke Jackson for this interview with Kara Wilson. Let's hear her account of what she saw from the body cam. Officers show up in force, guns drawn, surround the vehicle. They have two empty police cars. They pull up in two police cars to block her in, right? Mm -hmm. So they have their two police cars parked in front of my vehicle. And she's in the van in the drive-thru. Um, they come out, guns out, yelling, screaming, get out the car, get out the car. Um, I can hear her and what I've heard her like, uh, I'm not dressed. What do I get to get out for? Um, I think she told him they took my money. They took my food. Why do I got to get out? So she had no idea why they were even there. No idea. Now mm -hmm. in 52 seconds, mind you, 52 seconds, not even one whole minute of them asking her to get out the car. This mm -hmm. officer holsters his right, he holsters his gun, pulls his right arm and his right leg back and prepares to punch her. He opened her door, no, oh, opened her door. Yes. And and he stepped, took the two, the step back and he prepared to punch her to deliver those punches. So she gets hit and she goes, oh! And she's, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he punches her again. So you see her head snapping back. And this is what kills me because the news is still reporting that they don't know if she was punched. Yet you can clearly see this man punching her in her face. So he's punching, he punches her, he gives her at least two blows to the face. Mm -hmm. That second blow, I think she realizes she's in motion. I say that because the car kind of juts forward a little bit before she actually takes control of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And when she takes control of it now, she's like this, because mind you, he's knocked her glasses off her face. She can't, she can't see. So she's at 10 and two with her face out the window. So she's trying to get away. She puts her foot on the gas. She barrels through the cars in front of her. At first, she actually tries to find a way around the cars. But puncher man is right in this window. And so she just takes off. There was no officer in front of the vehicle. There was no officer in either of the cars. Every officer around the vehicle jumped back, except for the one was uh, uh, what the is guy his name? Gerard 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 is it Gerard Carton Carlton? Mm -hmm. Okay, Officer I remember, Carlton. I remember the jumped mm -hmm. in the vehicle. Everybody else jumps the, back. The passenger, you got to. He jumps in. The passenger door was open because they had taken right. The mm -hmm. her and her boyfriend went to the restaurant. The boyfriend had gotten out the vehicle. The officer was standing between the door and the car. He was standing mm -hmm. there with his hand on this gun. When she pulled off, he jumped into the vehicle instead of stepping back. He jumped into the vehicle before she got to the street, which was, I don't know how many feet. Maybe, she, was, she was gone. Maybe 12 she feet. Was, she was gone. He, he, she hit the corner. As she makes that right turn, that's when she you. sees him in the car with her. And this child lets out a blood curdling scream and he starts hitting her with bullets. He put two in her head and five down her side. She was an organ donor with no organs left to donate. Wow. He executed my child. Our condolences and prayers go out to the Wilson family for their tragic loss. Now let's look at the footage and see why what is not there is more important than what is. Let's first take a look at the most important aspect of this story. The thing that led to Alexis's death. The bone of contention is whether or not she was punched. See, this video only shows an angle from Officer Carlton's body cam, camera four. However, another view would have shown us a clearer picture as to what really happened. Let's remember the establishing shot of camera two. It shows clearly the driver's side and the officer at the door. If there was a punch thrown, this camera would have clearly shown what happened. Let's not forget camera one, as we can see the driver's side as clear as day. Even though we're not privileged to those angles, this angle still tells quite a bit of the story. If you look, Officer Perez on the driver's side has already holstered his weapon. 
His flashlight is still in his hand. Watch the light as it jumps very quickly just before her head snaps back. It's unclear which hand he had it in, but whatever motion he made caused that light to flash very quickly and all around the front seat. Also, another observation made from this footage is that Officer Carlton had already begun to jump into the vehicle before Alexis took off. He was already in the front seat before her foot hit the gas. Again, camera one would have been ideal for this footage. We would have been able to see whether Perez punched Alexis and exactly when Officer Carlton jumped into the vehicle. And let's not forget the officer that stepped away from the vehicle as she drove off. That was camera six. She had a clear view of Officer Carlton and when he jumped in. The most important view is that of camera four when Officer Carlton jumped into the vehicle. That camera angle would have shown everything that transpired right up until the shooting. In every other case where we have a police-involved shooting and body camera footage, they show everything right up until shots fired, except here. As we can see, the lack of footage and transparency from the Dalton police and Mayor Tiffany Henyard is critical to knowing what truly happened. This is a case that demands answers. Tiffany Henyard is withholding critical information from this family and the public. Usually, a white officer killing a black civilian is national news, but no charges were filed against Officer Carlton as a decision was made from the edited version of the footage. The Wilson family and the public deserve answers. Citizens' participation. Would anyone like to address the council at this time? Please come forward, speak directly into the mic, and give us your name for the record, please. Good evening. My name is Carl Wilson. Car I'm sorry, Carl. Carl Wilson. Um, I'm here this evening because um, I thought that they um, might not be aware of uh, uh, an officer that's been hired. That officer has killed four people in a matter of six years. Um, my daughter, unfortunately, was one of them. Um, with my daughter's case, this officer arrived on the scene and started punching her in, his, in her face with his mag light in his hand within 52 seconds. Within 54 seconds, my daughter was dead. She was unarmed. She was 100 pounds, right? So this officer prior to her had killed four, three other people. And I went to Dalton to question, why would they hold on to an officer that has made killed this many people within a six year period? So what does 10, 20 years for this officer look like, right? Um, there was an incident where he killed a man in the hospital with all the drugs they have available to say to sedate someone. I don't, I don't know why that officer chose to use bullets. Um, that officer now works for you all. He's in your town. And one night, your 19 year old daughter might go out to buy food and never come home. Again. That's what happened. Um, so I don't know if you all want to see um, his the different uh, lawsuits he's involved in. He's actually involved in that lawsuit that cost that cost his office thirty-three and a half million dollars. Um, he's got four other lawsuits against him. Uh, he was acquitted for one incident with a man in the hospital, but that acquittal has been overturned. So he's caused all this mess over there and cost all this, this millions of dollars. And, and of course we have a lawsuit as well, but he's done all that over there and now he's here. We'll do that. So I didn't know as your citizens, if you all knew that, I didn't know if you knew this, this officer's history. So I just wanted to uh, make the community aware that he's in your town now. And like I said, he's on the force seven years total. He killed four people and he shot a fifth after my daughter. He returned to work and shot a fifth person. Um, that person survived luckily for them and their family. Um, she had a bright future. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an educator. 
Um, my daughter was doing the same thing. She she was she was raised in Homewood. She grew up and went to Homewood Baltimore High School. She was a jerky. She was about to start her own business. She helped the girl. She's a big brother. Um, I've been a therapist for many children in this community, uh, applied behavior analysis. Uh, I have a company over at Madison uh, where we work with children with autism. My daughter had a bright future. Good things were happening to her. And she went out for fast food one night and she just never came home. Oh, Caroline, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you for bringing this information to us. Thank you. S-H-A-W-N-L-I-T-T-R-I-C-E. -I, 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 I too am here on behalf of Alexis Wilson. I'm a community psychologist. I am also a strong supporter of the Alexis Wilson family, Kara Wilson and Alonzo Wilson, who lost their beautiful baby girl in 2021. Um, you heard what was said before I came up here. I too am piggybacking on the comment that was made. But my question is, um, what are the procedures and protocols in place uh, to examine an officer as they transfer from one place to another? Um, and they, they've had a work history of working in a prior uh, police district. Um, secondly, I want to know now that this information has been brought to your attention, for those of you who do not know or did not know, um, what is the next step? Is there a process by which uh, this can be examined? Um, the information can be uh, looked at to see what current pending lawsuits exist um, and also the use of force uh, charges that have been made in order for him to transition from the first police force. And then thirdly, um, is there a protocol set in place under Oak Forest, under this board, uh, for there to be some kind of recall of his hiring? Those are my questions. I'll answer it in a nutshell. It's my job, and I will think that the uh, city administrator and I will uh, sit down with our police chief uh, and discuss the situation now that you brought it to our attention. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. You all have a good evening. All right. Anyone else like to address the council? Yes, sir. Hi. Your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Fletcher. No. That's what I'm sorry. No worries. Is better? I'm Fletcher. I am well, much better, Fletcher. Perfect, perfect. Fletcher, last name? Bone. B O H N E. <laughs> yes. Good evening, Mayor and Board. My name is Camille Williams, and I am uh, a community organizer, and I'm here to support um, the mother of. Alexis Wilson. And I'm also here as a community leader to just ask you all if you guys can consider looking at um, this officer's background because we have all just seen what just happened in Springfield where that officer was allowed to jump from force to force without being held accountable. So we're trying to warn you as a neighbor, as neighbors, to say, hey, you have an officer who has an alarming record, who has cost Dalton $70 million in lawsuits for use of force, murdering people, and beating people. This is an amazing community. And we don't, you guys do not deserve to have this community drained because of lawsuits, because of one officer who cannot protect and serve. So I ask you guys, to please look at this officer's background and reconsider saying you cannot patrol my city because if you can do it once, twice, three times, four times, and then you come back and do it almost six months later and shoot someone else, oh, you can do it again because our laws are lax. So I'm calling on you guys to please stand with us and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Appreciate it. 